I'm glad you got that. I wake up with the same one every morning. <laughs> She's my wife, Samantha, and I'm incredibly proud of what she does. <laughs> but today, Labour's taxes and regulations are making life impossible for our entrepreneurs. Just this week, the exodus of business from Labour's Britain continued as WPP announced it was moving to Ireland. A man called Stephen Ellis Cooper emailed me at the end of last month. You know him. The conference heard his story on Sunday. He's from Worcestershire, and with his wife and two daughters, he's been running his business for nearly 20 years. He saw it grow into something that he called magical, employing five people, contributing to the economy, and then along came Labour. Now he's down to his last employee, and he says this, I'm sat at my desk now in tears as I'm so sad that what I've spent such a long time trying to build up is being so systematically smashed into the floor and the Labour government are to blame. What an outrageous way for a government to treat someone who is trying to do their best, trying to make a living for their family, trying to create opportunity for others. So here's what we're going to do. Let us start by dealing with the nightmare complexity of business taxes. Let us get rid of those complex reliefs and allowances and use the savings to cut corporation tax by three pence. But I don't believe that the government's role in the economy is just about tax, tax and spend or just about sound money and finance. I have never believed in just laissez-faire. I believe the government should play an active part in helping business and industry. So when our economy is overheating in the southeast, but investment is still required in the north, it is the right thing to do, not to go ahead with a third runway at Heathrow, but instead to build a high-speed rail network that links Birmingham, Manchester, London, Leeds. In that way, we can rebalance Britain's economy. <laughs> but the problems our country faces goes far beyond financial crisis and economic downturn. And in the end, I would like to be judged not just on how we handle crises, but on two things. How we improve the public institution that I care about most in this country, the NHS, and how we fulfill what will be the long-term mission of the Conservative Party, mending our broken society. Now, there is a dangerous argument doing the rounds about how we do that. You may have heard it, and I have to tell you, Labour are clutching at it as some sort of intellectual lifeline. It goes like this. In difficult times, we need a bigger state, not just in the financial and economic sense, but in a social sense too. A Labour minister said something really quite extraordinary last week. And I think it revealed a huge amount about them. David Miliband said that unless government is on your side, you end up on your own. On your own without the government. I thought it was one of the most arrogant things I've heard a politician say. For Labour, there is only the state and the individual. Nothing in between. No family to rely on, no friend to depend on, no community to call on, no neighbourhood to grow in, no faith to share in, no charities to work in. No one but the minister. Nowhere but Whitehall. No such thing as society. Just them, their laws, their rules and their arrogance. And I have to say, 
You cannot run our country like that. It's why, when we look at what's happening with our country, we can see the problem. It's not Blair, or Brown, or Miliband, or Balls, or Harmon, or... It's not the leader, it's Labour. They end up treating people like children, with a total lack of trust in people's common sense and decency. This attitude, this whole health and safety, human rights culture, has infected every part of our life. If you're a police officer... <laughs> if you're a police officer, you cannot now pursue an armed criminal without first filling out a risk assessment form. <laughs> Teachers can't put a plaster on a child's grazed knee without first calling an a, a first aid officer. Even foreign exchanges for students. I promise I'm not making this up. You can't host a school exchange anymore without parents going through an enhanced criminal records bureau check. We have got to end this nonsense. When times are tough, it's not a bigger state we need, it's better, more efficient government. But even more important than that, we need a stronger society. And that means trusting people and sharing responsibility with them. But no one will ever take lectures from politicians about responsibility unless we get our own house in order. And that means sorting out our broken politics. People are sick of it, sick of the sleaze, sick of the cynicism, copper bottom pensions, plasma screen TVs on the taxpayer, expenses and allowances that would not stand for a second in the private sector. This isn't a conservative problem, a Labour problem or a Liberal Democrat problem. It is a Westminster problem and we've got to sort it out. And in the end, in the end, this is about the judgment to see just how important this issue is for people's faith in politics. And it's about character. Yes, because you've got to have the character to take on vested interests in your own party. That is what I've done. The first to say, MPs voting on their pay, open-ended final salary pension schemes, the wretched John Lewis list, they all have to go. And it's no different in Europe. We've drawn up a hard-hitting code of conduct for our MEPs. With European elections next year, the message is very simple. 